Hello 3D printing friends! Today on the BV3D channel we're going to install the Micro Swiss All Metal Hot End on an Ender 3 V2. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BV3D. Hi, welcome back! Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about cool 3D printer upgrades, 3D modeling, and other 3D printing related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, so today we'll be installing the Micro Swiss All Metal Hot End on the Creality Ender 3 V2 3D printer. Installing this upgrade is super easy because the Micro Swiss is a drop in replacement for the standard Creality PTFE lined hot end. While the standard Creality hot end is fine for a PLA and TPU, some other filaments need temperatures above 235 degrees C. That 235 degree number is about as hot as I'm comfortable running a PTFE lined hot end because at about 240 degrees and higher, the PTFE begins to deform, which can lead to a clogged hot end. Plus, it can also release bad for you fumes, so it's best to keep it at 235 and below. So, while a lot of PETG filament will print fine in the 225 to 235 degree range, some PETG likes it hotter, up into the 250 to 265 degree range, and ABS is like that as well. So, at the low side of those filament's temperature scales, they can print at temperatures that are compatible with PTFE-lined hot ends. But if you want to go hotter, you need an upgrade. And the Micro Swiss All Metal Hot End will enable you to do that without worrying about nozzle clogs and fumes. Well, at least you won't have to worry about fumes from an overly hot PTFE liner. Filament can be another story. The Ender 3 V2 will let you set the hot end to a maximum of 260 degrees C and the bed can be set to a maximum of 110 degrees C. So after this upgrade, any filament that can print at or below 260 degrees C on a bed at or below 110 degrees C, your Ender 3 V2 should be able to handle. Some filament may need specific print surfaces or enclosures for best results, but at least the printer itself should be able to hit the required temperatures. Now long-time viewers may be getting a sense of deja vu. And that's because I've got videos covering the installation of Micro Swiss All Metal Hot Ends on other printers as well, and the one that I did for the Ender 3 Pro is very similar to this one. But the hot end fan shroud is slightly different on the Ender 3 V2, and I wanted to upgrade this printer to the Micro Swiss. So I thought V2 owners would appreciate a refreshed video showing specifically how to upgrade this printer. Now Micro Swiss sells this kit on their site, and they also sell it on Amazon. So no matter where you get it, you're looking at spending a little less than 65 bucks US. And this one I bought from their Amazon storefront. So what all comes with it? Well, here's the box, and you can see this kit is compatible with quite a few printers. So inside the box, there's the heat sink with the titanium thermal tube or heat break attached. There's the silicone sock to provide insulation for the heater block. There's the heater block itself with a screw to secure the thermistor's wires. There's the wear-resistant plated brass 0.4 millimeter nozzle. And then it's tool time. A 7 mm wrench, an Allen key, bolts to secure the hot end to the X-carriage, collet clips, a spare collet, and a couple of grub screws. When we install this upgrade, there's no wiring or anything that needs to be done. We'll be reusing the heater cartridge and thermistor from the existing stock hot end. In addition to the tools included in the kit, you'll need an adjustable wrench and a Phillips screwdriver. Oh, and after installing this upgrade, you'll need to level the bed. This is some major work on the hot end, and the nozzle may be closer or further from the bed compared to the stock hot end after the Z-axis is home, so keep that in mind. Also, because the thermal characteristics of the hot end will have changed a little, you might need to do a PID tuning on the hot end. But you should only need to do this if you notice wild temperature fluctuations, where the printer is overshooting the target temperature by several degrees, and then falling way below, and then bouncing back and forth, trying to settle in at the temperature that you set. But having done this previously on an Ender 3 Pro, my experience has been that it just works, and I haven't had to do a PID tuning. I followed Micro Swiss's recommendation to increase the printing temperatures by 5 or 10 degrees C and reduce the retraction amount a little bit. The all metal hot end seems to need a little less of it. So like I said before, the installation of the Micro Swiss all metal hot end is easy. Now basically we'll remove the old hot end assembly, transfer the heater cartridge and thermistor to the new one, and bolt the new one on. 
So let's go ahead and get into it. Not counting heating and cooling times, this really only takes a couple of minutes to do. We'll start with the printer turned off and the filament unloaded. Your printer should be cold and empty, like the soul of the company I work for. Remove one screw from the rear of the fan shroud. The one you're after is the screw between the two wheels. Around front, carefully rotate the shroud and remove it from the X carriage. Then hang it over the X axis arm. Turn the printer on and heat the nozzle to 220 degrees. Once the nozzle is up to temperature, remove the collet clip, then press down on the retaining ring and remove the Bowden tube. Now be careful because the nozzle is hot and the heat sink is starting to get that way. The end of the Bowden tube may look yucky. Turn the printer off and let it cool down to room temperature. After it's cooled down, remove the two screws, securing the stock hot end assembly to the X carriage. Remove the screw securing the thermistor to the side of the heater block. Then remove the silicone sock from the heater block. Loosen the grub screw securing the heater cartridge to the heater block. Slide the heater cartridge and the thermistor out of the heater block. The titanium heat break or thermal tube is shipped inside the cooling block. Remove it from the cooling block, then screw it into the new heater block. It goes on the opposite side from these screw heads. Tighten it with the included wrench. Screw the nozzle into the heater block and tighten it with the included wrench. Screw the new cooling block onto the carriage using the included screws. Make sure the screws are tight. Insert the stock heater cartridge and thermistor into the new heater block. The thermistor goes in the smallest hole on the side of the heater block and its wires should go around either side of the screw hole as shown. Tighten the clamping screws to secure the heater cartridge using the included Allen key. Use the included screw to secure the thermistor wires to the heater block. Don't over tighten the screw. The idea is to keep the wires in place without crushing them. Insert the grub screw into the cooling block, but only give it one turn. Install the heater block assembly into the cooling block. Tighten the grub screw to secure it in place. Now it's time to install the Bowden tube and collet clip. The end of my Bowden tube was kind of gross, so I trimmed the end off. I used a cutting guide I found on Thingiverse to help make a straight cut. Insert the Bowden tube into the top of the cooling block until it bottoms out. It doesn't go in very far. Then attach the collet clip and press the Bowden tube in again to fully seat it. It should only go in about a millimeter more. Turn the printer on and heat the nozzle to 235 degrees C. Once it's up to temperature, use an adjustable wrench to hold onto the heater block and tighten the nozzle with the included 7 millimeter wrench. Tighten the grub screw securing the heat break. Tighten the heater block clamp screws, securing the heater cartridge. Turn the printer off and let it cool to room temperature. Then install the silicone sock on the heater block. And finally, reinstall the fan shroud. There is a pin on the shroud which goes into a hole on the right side of the X carriage. Line these up and rotate the shroud into place. Secure it with the screw on the back of the X carriage. Okay, now we're done with the installation. 
So in case you were wondering, my desire to upgrade this printer stems from the fact that I have some PETG filament made from recycled plastic and I was having a bit of trouble printing it at 235 degrees C and below. And because of uh, reasons, I wanted to print it on this specific printer. And after installing the Micro Swiss All Metal Hot End on this printer, I was able to print that PETG successfully at 255 degrees C. Now the PETG in question is Greengate 3D's Primetime Lime. I've been able to print Greengate 3D's other recycled PETG filaments easily, usually around 220 degrees C, but this one spool challenged me. And this hot end upgrade allowed me to meet that challenge and print things with that filament. And I love the color. I've printed a few things in it since the upgrade. I printed a vase and I printed a bottle opener. And the bottle opener STL is something that Greengate's selling for a dollar. I figured as long as I was already ordering a spool of the Primetime Lime and a spool of the Billy Rubin's Cherry Pie, I'd throw this in the cart too. And you know what? It works. It's completely plastic, but I can open bottles with it. I've actually printed a couple of them and I have them scattered around. So when I want to pop open a Coke or an excessively fizzy bottle of Topo Chico, I've usually got one handy. So that's the Micro Swiss All Metal Hot End. It's easy to install and it lets you print higher temperature materials. They've also got a variety of nozzle sizes available as plated wear resistant brass and plated hardened steel. In fact, I picked up a 0.8 millimeter nozzle when I bought the hot end and I'm looking forward to printing with it. Maybe something in vase mode with a transparent type of filament. I bet that would look nice. Oh, I also asked MicroSwiss if they had any discount codes I could share with my viewers. That's you, by the way. And they came through with one. So thanks to MicroSwiss for doing that. I really appreciate it. And I'm sure you will too. If you go take a peek at the video description, you'll find it there. I'll leave it up there until it stops working. So if you're watching this and there's no discount code, well, I'm sorry you missed out. Well, 3D printing friends, that's about all the time we have for this episode. And now that we're at the end, let's go print something cool. Oh wait, I meant hot. Let's go print something hot. Hey, real quick before you go, I wanted to say thanks for being one of the super awesome people who sticks around all the way to the end. And thanks for all the likes, comments, and shares. And an especially big thanks to those who directly support what I do. You're all wonderful for doing that, and I really appreciate it. If you liked this episode, a thumbs up would be great. And if you'd like to help support the channel, check the description for ways you can do exactly that. Oh, and I've got some other videos here that you might want to take a look at, too. And if nothing else, please consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. It's absolutely free, and it's an excellent way to help keep me making these videos for you. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time here on the BB3D channel.